I'm starting on a new crystal radio and this one is going to be based roughly on a 1997 article from ARRL. I'm going to make quite a few changes to it but that's the starting point. This is going to be the coil. This is a four inch piece of PVC and as you can see I've already marked it here and here. It's roughly two and a half inches wide and the center marks are about two centimeters. Sorry about mixing the measurements but it's about two centimeters apart and it will have 32 turns of wire. It'll have 23 from here and then about here it's going to have a tap and then nine more turns after that. So that will be the coil and I'm not going to show all the details on that this time around because I've done that for several of these other radios so the winding of the coil is the same. I will go do that. We'll come back and we'll look at the finished coil. This is the finished coil take a close-up look at it. From this side to this side there are 32 turns, 35 feet of wire and from here to this tap there are 23 turns and from this tap to here there are nine more turns. So that's the coil. It's wound on a four inch piece of PVC and I have spray painted it with a clear and that's very important clear uh, acrylic lacquer. You don't want to use anything with coloring in it because the metal particles in the paint will interfere with the coil but a clear layer is okay. It will help hold the wire to the to the uh, coil. So that's it. Okay, let's go on to the next part. Let's go over the list of parts for this radio. Uh, the first is going to be a crystal earphone and this is standard for crystal radios. You cannot use other types of earphones. You have to use this style so uh, bite the bullet. You can get them. They're not very expensive, okay? So you're going to need this. We've already talked about the coil, so you're going to have to make a coil. So that's one of the pieces. Uh, you're going to need screws. I prefer brass or stainless screws. You're going to need clips or washers, something like that, like I've shown in the other videos, to connect the wires. And then you're going to need two of these two variable capacitors and the values on these are from roughly 0 to 360. Picofarads. Yeah, picofarads. Now you can use this other style like this. Um, these are getting hard to find, these air tunable ones. They, uh, yeah, like this. They are getting hard to find. They're also susceptible to damage and I'll talk about when I do the mounting of them. I'll talk about uh, some issues with uh, protecting them from, from damage. And the last item, let's see if we can get a close-up on this. This is the diode that you need to use and you cannot use substitutes. I've had a lot of people write and ask, can I use just any diode? And the answer is no. It must be this one, you can see the writing on it. It is a 1N34A, it's a germanium style diode. So that's, the, that's a critical component, must use. The last item that we need, and it's easy to overlook, is a piece of wood to mount it on. So this one happens to be 7 by 7 inches, but you know it's not critical as long as you can mount all the components on there. I'm still thinking about how to mount everything on this board. Uh, some of these things are kind of tricky, like the coil. Theoretically, the coil you want to lift off of the surface. So I'll probably make some blocks and stick it underneath there like I have in the past. Uh, yeah, not, not what I really want to do. I'd like to do something a little different this time, but I'm still thinking on it. These things are really difficult to mount. They don't really have any mounting screws. There's some holes up here that are tapped, but the, the tapping is really low quality and the screws don't fit well in them. Uh, I've got the right size screws and the right uh, thread count, but they don't want to go in there. Also, if you use these holes, you've got to be really careful. Let's look a little closer at this. There are a few issues when mounting these air type variable capacitors. One of them is, you can see that mounting hole right there at the end of my finger. It's all nicely threaded and all ready to go for you, but it is really close to these plates. If you drive that screw in there too far, you'll bend your capacity plates and then your capacitor is a mess. It is ruined. That's consideration number one. Number two, if you're not going to use those screws for mounting, you pretty much have to mount them using these lugs. So you have to solder those to something. You can solder them to a piece of uh, PC board 
and then screw the PC board down or you can use brass screws and solder those lugs to the brass screws. Not an easy thing to do either. The last consideration has to do with the fact that when you rotate the knob that capacitor comes up, that uh, those plates come up and if they get into the electromagnetic field of the coil, like back there, they can change the tuning and do strange things. Uh, these things can run into stuff. Uh, they can be easily damaged because they're sticking up. Uh, they can be hit with something and bent and then the, that's the end of your capacitor. So a few considerations when using this type of uh, variable air tuned capacitor. One board layout I'm thinking about using is to put both the capacitors on the right side over here because I'm right handed and I can then go from one tuning capacitor to the other like this pretty easily. The disadvantage is that these capacitors are going to be exposed to mechanical impacts. In other words, people bumping it, hitting it, whatever, and they're going to be exposed to dust and so on. So that's a serious drawback of, of this layout. One way of mounting them would be to mount them inside, like this, something like that. Mount them maybe oops, like this, one above the other, and the coil will help protect the capacitors. However, there are some drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is that uh, I can't let these things get close to the to the uh, coil and in fact I cannot let any of the metal get close to the coil you can see here I can't let it get close on this side either because it will interfere with the magnetic field of the of the coil so yeah that's an alternative I think it would look cooler uh, we shall see if I can get that worked out here we are I've decided to mount it like this I've cut the wood way down just so it's barely gonna fit and what I'm thinking about is putting both of the uh, variable capacitors inside here, like we talked about. And then I'm going to put the earphone, mount the earphone out here, and then antenna and ground out here. These uh, fanny stock clips like that. And that will be the whole radio. Right now I'm trying to figure out how to mount a faceplate on here. I'm thinking about putting in some partially curved pieces of wood I can screw into and put a either a wood sheet or something through in there or covering or something to mount those capacitors on but uh, not quite sure where that's going to be yet. Here's a status update. As you can see I've got a face plate made. This needs to be finished out obviously. And I've got the two capacitors mounted in here. One will be the antenna, the other will be the coil capacitor. I've decided I'm going to put the headset, the earphone over here, one, two. And you might just barely be able to see the the uh, diode right there and then this will be the ground let's turn it around back here I've mounted the two capacitors I'll move one so you can see it there's one and then the other will swing down like that these are the hold downs for the coil one two screws in there this will be the antenna uh, clip and here are the two wires for the for the coil so that's about it. Not a lot of room in there. Well, the one of the one of the capacitors rather will be for the antenna, and the other capacitor will be that coil capacitor. Okay, well, I'll go back and we'll do some more. I'm not quite finished. I'm going to need to shellac this. I'll probably have to remove some stuff, but uh, shellac the wood, put some finish on it. But as you can see, we're pretty close. It's operational. Uh, I've got the face plate in. I've got the capacitors mounted. I've got some plastic tubes on the capacitors because, let me show you this, this is a, one of these capacitors and the circuit is basically you've got uh, these things which are the lower set of plates so there's the, there's the upper set of plates and then you have the lower set of plates and these connections go to the lower set of plates in this model, there's other varieties but the upper plates are attached to this brass rod and that brass rod is what sticks out of here so this brass rod is part of the circuit if you don't have something on here that insulates your fingers from it you will interfere with the radio signal so you'll get a very bad quality uh, output on your on your radio 
So the plastic knobs are in place. Uh, some fancier knobs would be better, obviously. Continuing around on the front side, I've got the uh, earphone, which is this. I've put an extender on it, which is why the wire is a different color. I've got a strain reliever. I've got the two connections. One of the modifications is you need a, a resistor here instead of a capacitor. The old earphones required capacitor here, but the new earphones, these piezoelectric ones, have a lot of capacitance built in. So in fact you need a resistor here. Uh, I got my two brass washers. Um, oh, by the way, this is 50k ohms. Uh, I've got my brass washers to hold down the uh, earphone connections. You can see back in here, yes, yeah, you can see back in here the diode, and then back here is the ground. Let's turn it around and look at the back side. I'm not going to win any awards for beauty on this one, but uh, it works, it's functional. You can see the, the uh, two capacitors in here as I'm moving the knobs in the front. So this is the ground and the lower capacitor is my ground capacitor. That's this one in the circuit diagram. Let's see if I can get it in there a little better. So that's the, the lower capacitor is this one and the upper capacitor will be this one in the diagram. So this is the upper and the lower, so this is what I'm calling my ground capacitor. And it comes out here, it goes to ground over here, and then the ground wire also comes up here to the uh, earphone piece. Okay, that's the ground. And then the antenna is the common, which is the upper set of plates, and the knob of course as we talked about. So this is the common, it goes to the front side of the coil, which is up here, and goes, yes, out to the uh, uh, coil, and then the other side of the capacitor comes out here, and this is my antenna connection. If I had to do it over again, I would put it down here, but I didn't leave myself enough space. So, that's pretty much it. Well, let's go see it in operation. I will say I can't operate it very long because YouTube has restrictions on how long I can play other people's music or radio stations or whatever. Let's talk about some pros and cons of these two different versions. This one over here is the what I call the modified Boy Scout radio and this is the modified 1997 ARRL version. Let's begin with this one. There's some of the benefits of this one. I really like this one because it's easy to build. It's very inexpensive to build. The only things you have to pay for are this diode over here and that earpiece back there. The rest of this, like this old bicycle spokes, some leftover household wiring, so on, piece of plastic tubing, all of that you may have laying around the house. So that's, uh, that makes it very inexpensive to build. Very easy to build. This is, you know, something anybody with a few hand tools can put together. So that's all very good. This one, okay, in contrast, this one, you have to buy these two capacitors, uh, the earphone and the diode back there. And these two things are rather expensive, so whereas this is a few bucks, this can be between five and fifteen dollars, uh, depending on what you have around the house. This one's a lot more complex because of the way I chose to build it. It's definitely a step up from, from this one in uh, complexity of construction. What else is interesting? Ah, this one, the ground is not really that important. I've gotten very good reception without the ground. This one, absolutely, you have to have a good ground. Must have a good ground. Both of them require a good antenna. This one, the tuning is very simple. You can just slide it back and forth, but because of this tuning, you get a lot of crosstalk. If you're trying to pull in a weak signal, you'll oftentimes hear other, other stronger stations in the background. So that's kind of an annoyance. This one, the tuning is very difficult. You have to, typically you'll start with one, tune it a little bit, go to the other one, tune it a little bit, go back and forth. Uh, and it's easy to skip over a station by accident, but as far as clarity goes, you cannot beat this one. I mean, you can get a very weak radio station 
and this one will that, that's all you hear you can tune out everything else so for clarity this is absolutely wonderful but for tuning it's a lot fussier it's a lot uh, less straightforward okay well that's about it for the differences to date I've tried over a dozen of these variable capacitor tune type crystal radios and none of them have worked uh, they all get really poor reception. They may pick up one channel, but you can do that with a single diode, so you don't need a, any, other, any other hardware. So this one actually works, and I'm going to recommend it. Uh, if you're a little bit more of an advanced builder, I would say this is uh, really the, the one to build. Uh, these are my two favorite radios. For simplicity, I like this one. For clarity of signal, I like this one. But they're really both good choices. Okay, well that was it for today's project. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your DIY home electronics projects and crystal radio building. So does it really work? Well, have a listen.